So Zbic Adsorption XBC on the TSX, uh, it's currently trading at a price of 51 cents, but it actually is halted right now, uh, which we'll get into why. Um, but Zbec is a provider of sustainable gas solutions used in energy, mobility, and industry applications. It specializes in deploying a portfolio of proprietary technologies for the distributed production of hydrogen, renewable natural gas, oxygen, and nitrogen. Uh, the company has nine manufacturing facilities, 17 clean tech service centers, and four sales offices spanning over four continents. So as Ryan said, we have discussed the stock on the podcast a few times in the past, uh, and I've actually included them on this chart here that I have up on the screen. Um, but if you're just listening, I will go over you know when we actually discuss them. So the first time we touched on the stock was November of 2019 at $2.05. I covered the company as a star of the week after the share price was off to a strong year, up about 185% year to date at that time. And it was driven by a hot green energy market or sector, uh, good financial results and growth in its backlog. Now, the second time that we discussed the stock on the podcast was December of 2020, uh, when it traded at about $7.20. And uh, and we discussed it again in a stock versus stock battle where we compared Zbec and Greenlane uh, Renewables. And Ryan noted at that time that insiders had been selling with the CEO cashing out $2.3 million as well. There was no insider buying. And he also said that the company remained far from profit and traded at 12 times sales. And the last time that we touched on the stock was actually just uh, three, about three weeks ago. Uh, Brett covered it, um, looking again, uh, re or sorry, revisiting our previous stock battle of Zbec and Greenlane Renewables, which we all confirmed uh, again that Greenlane was the better between the two due to being closer to profit and having a cash rich balance sheet, all while Zbec had significant top line revenue growth, but it continued to lack consistent profitability and was levered up. So let's just take a look at the company's financial guidance and their actual results and how it lines up with those with that guidance. So looking at the 2019 fiscal year, uh, they actually did pretty well, um, you know, coming to meet this guidance where they uh, surpassed their revenue guidance, they surpassed their adjusted EBITDA guidance, uh, but their net earnings guidance did come in a little light uh, where they were two and a half million. Uh, or sorry, their actual results were light from the guidance where they were two and a half million dollars short. Now, looking at the fiscal 2022 guidance, um, they ended up, management ended up indicating that they expected to do about 10.2 million in adjusted EBITDA and 6.8 million in net earnings, where they actually only produced a loss of 22 million in adjusted EBITDA and a, a loss of about 32 million in net earnings. So maybe we can say that uh, we can give them the benefit of the doubt. Maybe that was just, you know, a COVID influence during the 2020 year. However, looking at fiscal 2021, uh, again, the company came short of its guidance. Uh, they met their revenue guidance of, you know, with a midpoint of $120 million. Uh, however, they were short on their guidance for adjusted EBITDA of 4.2 million, where they actually ended up posting a loss of 8.8 .8 million in adjusted EBITDA. And they refused to provide net earnings guidance because they probably knew that they weren't going to be profitable and they ended up losing $23.5 million. So you can see here, uh, as Ryan said, um, they, they put some targets out there, they had some guidance, but they just kept failing to meet it. Now, in the most recent quarter too, I also want to note, this is Q2 of 2022, the company had net debt of 34.3 million. Now, why is the stock halted? Well, on September 29th, 2022, the company announced that it was seeking creditor protection under the company's Creditors Arrangement Act. And as a result, trading in the common shares of Zbec were halted and the court issued an order author authorizing the corp to conduct a sale and investment solicitation process with the goal of maximizing value for shareholders. Um, so essentially, the company has gone bankrupt. That's what happens when you just aren't profitable, you have debt, you can't service that debt. So ultimately, Zbec serves as another cautionary tale of big promises with lofty business targets and under-delivering by management. 
They had great top line revenue growth, but an inability to generate consistent profit. And even without considering the bankruptcy and that shareholders are essentially going to be left with zero, the stock is down over 95% since early 2021. Uh, when you know Ryan was saying that uh, we definitely would avoid the stock. Um, so yeah, cautionary tale. Next week, I will look into another stock, which we had also highlighted as a cautionary tale and look at a few uh, nasty comments that came my way on uh, social media um, because, be of how, because of how I viewed the stock and my outlook on the stock. Um, 